Hello and welcome. Thank you for joining us in a time of worship for our weekly online worship reflection with the folks from Craigsbank Parish Church and Kestolfen Old Parish Church. Can I invite you to join in or to listen to our first hymn, which for the next few weeks will include some Advent or Christmas time carols and hymns. Our first scripture reading today is taken from Matthew chapter 1, the first six verses. This is the list of the ancestors of Jesus Christ, a descendant of David, who was a descendant of Abraham. From Abraham to King David, the following ancestors are listed. Abraham, Isaac, Jacob, Judah and his brothers, then Perez and Zerah, their mother was Tamar, Hezron, Ram, Aminadab, Nachshon, Salmon, Boaz, his mother was Rahab, Obed, his mother was Ruth, Jesse and King David. From David to the time when the people of Israel were taken into exile in Babylon, the following ancestors are listed. David, Solomon, his mother was the woman who had been Uriah's wife. Our second scripture reading is taken from 2 Samuel 11, the first five verses. The following spring, at the time of the year when the kings usually go to war, David sent out Joab with his officers and the Israelite army. They defeated the Ammonites and besieged the city of Rabah. But David himself stayed in Jerusalem. One day, late in the afternoon, David got up from his nap and went to the palace roof. As he walked around up there, he saw a woman taking a bath in her house. She was very beautiful. So he sent a messenger to find out who she was and learned that she was Bathsheba, the daughter of Eliam and the wife of Uriah the Hittite. David sent messengers to get her. They brought her to him and he made love to her. She had just finished her monthly ritual of purification. Then she went back home. Afterward, she discovered that she was pregnant and sent a message to David to tell him. So it's almost Christmas time and throughout the Northern Hemisphere, winter wonderland decorations and lights are brightening up the season. Primary schools and nurseries are bustling with nativity plays. Shops are displaying their politically correct Christmas cards. And churches adorn nativity sets. People are busy ordering turkeys, making Christmas lunch plans, and finalizing travel arrangements for family visits. 
The air is filled with a delightful scent of cinnamon and glue wine. Now, as we approach the end of the year, it's fascinating to observe how different Christmas traditions are unfolding. Almost regularly like clockwork this time of the year. In our church services, the familiar characters of the wise men from the east, the shepherds, the angels, the farm animals, Joseph, Mary, and the central figure, the wee baby born in Bethlehem, all make their customary appearance. Now for those of us who have heard these stories countless times, We may have encountered the genealogies in the Gospels of Matthew and Luke, and these list the noteworthy ancestors of Joseph and Mary and baby Jesus. In these patriarchal societies like ancient Palestine, it's intriguing to find the names of some women mentioned albeit sparingly, among the names of the men. One notable woman is Bathsheba. Although she is identified as Solomon's mother, the woman who had been Uriah's wife. Behind this phrase lies a saga of loyalty, betrayal, despair, friendship, lust, murder, punishment, forgiveness, redemption, and eventual honor, prestige, and even glory. Unfortunately, Bathsheba is often unfairly associated with a seductive reputation due to her illicit affair with King David, although it really wasn't an affair. However, delving deep into her story reveals a complex narrative, a tale of resilience and strength and influence. Normally, when the story of Bathsheba is told, so much of it ends up focusing on David, King David, and his abuse of his power, his sin of taking another man's wife and then taking that man's life, as well as the process of his eventual acknowledgement of his crimes, his asking for forgiveness, and then his eventual restoration after much suffering at the hands of his sons in later years. But in honouring the role and legacy and character of this ancestor of Jesus, the focus today falls squarely on Bathsheba, And David does not deserve a starring role today because it is despite his actions and not so much because of it that Bathsheba deserves her own story, deserves to have her name mentioned. So if you will allow me to recap briefly the story of Bathsheba, we find her being ogled by a king, who subsequently invites her over. He abuses his power significantly to a detriment and has her husband murdered. This husband, Uriah, by the way, was a loyal subject and a good friend of David. And he had proved his loyalty time and time again to to the king. Now Bathsheba becomes pregnant following David's abuse of her, and subsequently she loses the son that is born to them. Now we don't hear much about Bathsheba's subsequent storyline, apart from her securing from David the promise to have her son, her and David's son Solomon, installed as future king after David. And many years later, and various attempts at dethroning King David by some of his sons, we see Bathsheba featuring again, supporting her husband in sickness and in health to the point of being his primary 
carer in the last stage of his life. She then proceeds to thwart a deadly, subversive plot against her son Solomon's eventual crowning as king by acting with great wisdom and insight. We also have to keep in mind the likely positive impact that Bathsheba had on developing the character, the values of King David. Because the younger, foolish King David, we see when he first meets Bathsheba, seems to grow through trial and error, through introspection and moral and personal growth. So that by the time he hands over his throne to his true successor, his son Solomon, he's much wiser, more humble, and he has learned to do what is right. So over all those years of supporting her husband, the king, Bathsheba seems to have influenced David for the better. The picture we then have of Bathsheba towards the end of her story is one of the mother of the king sitting in the place of honor by the side of the king. We also see a son in Solomon who was raised with greater respect and wisdom seemingly than his siblings, uh, him having not tried to overthrow his father, but having bided his time, having waited respectfully and patiently, having learned what he could, and having taken good guidance from his parents. The final image of Bathsheba is one of honor and respect and even authority and power with a lot of influence. Now you might be wondering, what does all of this have to do with Christmas and Advent and the baby Jesus? This sounds more like power struggles of the type you would see in Game of Thrones or some of the family tensions of Downton Abbey. But let me remind you of the words that Mary, the mother of the baby Jesus, speaks when she talks about God in the run-up to the birth of her son, Jesus. Mary says, My soul proclaims the greatness of the Lord. My spirit rejoices in God, my Savior, for he has looked upon his handmaid's lowliness. Behold, from now on will all ages call me blessed. The Mighty One has done great things for me, and holy is His name. And why is this relevant? Because the God of the story of the baby in Bethlehem is gracious, revolutionary, a God who is personally involved with the lot of our lives. And all the more so with bringing low the haughty and lifting up the humble. It can be said of Mary and a legacy. It can be said of Jesus and his impact on the world. And it can also be said of Bathsheba. A woman whose life could have been limited to victimhood, limited to having been abused by the powers that be, and she could have turned vengeful or hateful or succumbed to despondency and grief. But that is not the way her life story plays out. Instead, we see a woman who mourns, who is broken, but who grows stronger through the pain. A woman who humbly, but in a determined way, lives up to a destiny that she believed God would enable for her and for her children. There are stories of other characters in the Bible who turn bitter or envious or vengeful, who, who miss 
They miss the more glorious destinies they could have shared in. But here we have Bathsheba, like other of Jesus of Nazareth's great, great grandmothers, Ruth and Tamar and Rahab, who were honored, empowered and blessed for humbly, but single-mindedly grabbing hold of God's promise and God's opportunity for salvation and restoration. So whenever you find yourself in the story of your life, wherever you are, this Advent, amidst all the glue wine and the nativity sets and the tinsel and the year-end busyness, know then that God is fully aware of the details of your life story. Know that you have agency in how your life plays out. You are able to affect the rest of your story. And if you feel at times too powerless or too much a victim of circumstances to be able to influence the outcome of your life, then remember that God sees you and God cares for you and God is able and willing to help you to write the next chapter in ways that can surprise you. That is very much part of the Christmas story. Amen. Shall we pray? Dear God, in every place where the demands of the powerful prevail, while the weak and the vulnerable struggle to be heard, you are present, almighty God. In every place where injustice props up the rich while the poor work quietly for justice, you are present, almighty God. In every place where fear calls loudly while hope is persistently whispered, you are present, almighty God. You are present strengthening the arm of the weak, upholding the efforts of the poor, demolishing all that stands in the way of love. May we stand with you. Amen. Amen.